All right, welcome back to my director of football career mode here on FIFA 19. We're with Bray Wanderer season two into December now, which is a bit of a short month. So we're going to play a game against Derry City here. We're going to sim the game against Waterford, the second team, and I'm going to play the Limerick, the Sim Limerick game as well. Now, it's going to be a short episode, so I'm going to go through the Youth Academy first. We're going to go ahead there. I'm going to go to the Youth Academy, and then I'm going to promote two players up from that academy because I want to clear some space because we are a bit short in space. and. Of course, on January 1st, we'll get scouting reports back and we'll have a chance to sign more players up. And I want to be able to just sign them as many as I can up because while I do think we're on for the, you know, the trophy, I do think it's also important that we do get depth behind here. Um, I'm sorry, we're starting to run out of space. We have 15 spaces left in the squad. So we'll see what happens with the youth squad. But I think we're trying to build a pretty strong youth academy. We're bringing players through that are starting to, you know, make an impact on the field. So without further ado, let's head to the youth academy section right now. Here's our youth academy. Here's a quick look through who we got. Jonathan or Joseph Gillespie. I was called Jonathan. Jeez, I'm not really sure this kid's gonna make the cut, but we'll leave him there for the time being. Ian McDemy looks a very promising prospect at right back, 50 overall at the moment, but great potential. Mark Brennan looks a pretty solid center defense midfielder, but again, very low on the, the overall, which is a bit annoying. Ben McNeil, 74 to 80 potential, potentially a player that could make the name up. Brendan Byrne, a playmaker, 74 to 80% potential. 2 overall at the moment, definitely has the potential to move forward. Lezek Dabrowski, is that how you pronounce his name? Center mid, 45 overall. Got potential, definitely someone to keep an eye out. Liam Walsh, and this kid might be one of the best players we have in the academy, but his overall is pretty poor at 43. But that potential looking very promising and a pretty good value for a guy who's 43. Jason Connolly, 50 overall, 67 to 79. I think he might get cut at the end of the month. Dylan Brady, 46 overall, but a pretty good goalkeeping potential. So he might get the call up. Joseph Walsh, I think might actually be the best player we have in this academy right now. 50 overall, 74, 92 potential. I think this guy has a massive future. Definitely I'm going to be, you know, starring for the uh, for the future. And finally here we got Dara Murphy, 55 overall, 68 to 84. I'm going to see what his potential is. And I'm not 100% convinced his potential is going to be high, but... You might get a call just for simply the fact that he's worth so much, but we'll have to see. But anyway, if you want to promote um, Ian McDemy, he's going to get a call up to the first team. He's a fantastic talent. I'm going to promote Joseph Walsh this time. I don't think anyone else would help right now. Am I right? Yeah, I just don't see. Um, he's good, but like I'm just I want to see another month for him before I see what he's worth. But anyway, that's it for this month. Let's push into the game. So your first game of the episode here as we travel down to Limerick and Munster. For this clash today in the league. We need to get our league form back on track. It's been pretty poor last episode, a disastrous episode really for ourselves. And just not what we we're looking for. Because picks up a yellow card, the first action of the game. And a very boring first half, but looks at things. And this is really where we need to see stats that happen in simulation games. But anyway, we need to play here. Is this going to be a nil-nil draw? Cast picks up an injury, that's not a good sign. Five to play, Heaney gets us the goal, and we go on to win 1-0. I'll take that, but Cassidy's injury is a bit of a concern. Hopefully he's not out long term. EA Sports Cup quarter final replay this time. We're at home to Waterford, of course, we drew the last time around. And I've sent the second team out again, and the reason for that simply is, is that we need to be on form and healthy for the league. But as I say that, we're down 1-0 at half time. They only made it 2-0, but we're back to 1-1 with Ellis with the 55th minute goal. Now, can we get the winner here with 50 to play? Can we get that winner? Come on, 10 lads, 5 to play. Get the winner. Late winner, we're just extra time. Here we go. I think this is going to penalties. I have a feeling this is going to penalties. It's not. Gibbs gets us the goal. What's going to happen? It's all over. Extra time. It is decided. Ethan Gibbs with the deciding 106th minute goal. That is fantastic. Great to see Ethan Gibbs score that one. 2 1 victory. We're through to the semi final. I might have to play that semi final because that's a pretty good achievement for ourselves. Hi there again, everybody. Well, here we are back at home today. It is Derry City taking the trip up here to Bray for today's game. Let's get a team on up. So here's the lineup for today. Breeding gets the start in net. Douglas, Heaney, Gibbons, and Hayes makes our back for today. Gillespie's going to play the holding role. Bowen and Noon get the start in midfield. And up top, we've got Cassidy, Pender, and Jack Kelly. 
He screened the ball well there. Good vision here. Should be. Early chance for Derry there, and they've capitalized on it perfectly. A really poor bit of defense on our end. Just you couldn't ask for a better chance for a striker. We'll need to watch the replay here to see what happened exactly, but I feel like, you know, their defense partially like the Red Sea, and yep, yeah, it did. Wide open. Green left with no chance. Does get a touch on it with his right hand, but not enough to stop it going to the back of the net. And I'm not sure those defenders are going to last very long if that's the way they're going to play today. That's the sighter, really, isn't it? Yeah, I think he shanked it, you know. That was a horrible connection. Now this, try it. Oh, penalty. Oh, giving it straight up. It a really penalty. poor defending by ourselves today. And I feel like we're going to have to make a tactical change at halftime here because this just isn't good enough. And Heaney gets the yellow card there. I'll take that. Not the red like he probably deserved. That's a red card. That's a red card to me. Taking him out completely. Free chance at goal. It's gone to the penalty spot. Breen here. Can he save it? Can he do it? Come on, Brian. Come on. Yes, he can. What a save. We've got off lightly there. Kelly. Okay, he's got around the back. It's in the back. Oh, what a change of fortune. From one end to the other, from a penalty they to go 2 0 up, and now it's suddenly 1 1. Derry City have just fallen asleep here at the wheel, and that is the type of. That's what you have to do in games. You have to make turnarounds like that, and they've got to be kicking themselves. What a run here from Kelly. What a cross. Look at the cross. Just lands right in the foot, and the keeper probably wonders how they went from one end of the field, from 2 0 possibly up, down to 1 1. It's a cruel game as sometimes sport is, but what a finish. You've got to take your chance when they come to you. Happy with that. Delighted that. Fist pump it away. Wow. What a change of game. This is... We're right back in it. We're right back in the game. Ender. Six through Cassidy. You know, Cassidy's been causing all sorts of problems here. Looks for Gillespie. Plays it off for Bowen. Bowen takes a touch. Was it one too many? It probably was. He should have taken that first time. Well, at the break, it is 1 1 here. What a half of roller coaster, really. You know, Derry City taking the lead early on, then the penalty, and straight from the penalty, we scored on the counter attack to make it 1 1. I feel like we're in the driving seat now. Momentum is definitely in our favour. We have to capitalise now and get three points here. Noon. The Cassidy lays it back. Noon, he takes a step too much, gets the ball back. But noon, you deserve better from that. It was worth the chance. But again, he probably should have delivered it back inside. But anyway, time substitutions. Joseph Walsh, Paul O'Connor and Chris Murphy coming on for Jer Pender, Derek Gibbons and Sean Heaney. Well, Derry City here, last chance for them. And there it is, full time. Unfortunately, it's been a scrappy, scrappy second half. Just nobody really getting a real big chance in that half to make a difference. And... Ultimately, in the end of the day, 1 1 is probably fair base in the second half, but that's the way it goes, isn't it? You know, you win some, you lose some, you draw some, so we'll take the draw and move on. At least it's not a loss. Well, Derry City had 12 shots to our four. I feel like half of them come, or at least 10 of them come in the first half. Two shots on target to their three with their possession. Yeah, it's just a scrappy game overall, to be honest. Anyway, let's go through the players. Jake Kelly to there, was a brilliant, fantastic assist on that cross, which. Pretty well, just majestic to be fair. Joseph Walsh came on, didn't get touched the ball, so don't know how you rank that. Liam Cassidy, pretty quiet game, didn't make the you know the moves we need him to make. You know, when your league's top scorer from left wing, you've got to lay a marker down. He didn't quite do that today, unfortunately. Jared Pender, solid game, held the ball up well. Derek Gibbons, eh, I thought the defense was poor today, so I'm not gonna give him a 7.7. .7, but one of these guys is a fourth for the goal, so I'm not sure who, but. That both of them are pretty poor. Seamus Breen, an eight. I'd give him pretty high mark as well. Thought he was brilliant, except for actually brilliant. It's not his fault. The first goal was it? You know, the penalty said the penalty, so kept us in the game. So yeah, pretty solid performance from Seamus Breen. Hugh Douglas down the right. Thought he got skinned alive today. To be honest, I mean he was like a revolving door at times today. 
Chris Murphy came on, solid outing from him. You know, he's right back, played center back pretty well. Ronald Gillespie, pretty strong commanding game from him. Dylan Hayes, didn't see much from Hayes this game. I was expecting a bit more out of him, but not really sure what to expect out of him, to be honest. Paul O'Connor has not returned to that form we expected. He came off the bench, did not put the shift in we needed him to put in. I was hoping he'd you know, come in and dominate the game, but unfortunately he didn't. Ian Bowen, a solid game from him. Shot lacked though, you know, the final quality, that was definitely a little poor. Darren Nuno thought was pretty good, of course got the goal. Pretty solid running from that position again. He's a, he's a pretty good centre mid. We just need to get him, O'Gorman, and O'Connor going again. I think we'll be all right. But anyway, that's the final team there. Hard to say who I'd give the man of the match to. I'd probably give it to Darren Nuno. I felt like he did more in the game and in the midfield overall. While Jay Kelly did run the line very strongly. So it's a close one, but I'd have to give it to Darren Nuno.